This is Dylan FM, the podcast that goes deep into the work and world of Bob Dylan. If you love Dylan, you're in the right place with your host, Craig Danuloff. Last week, we talked about Empire Burlesque and how it was received in the mid-80s and how its reputation dove in the 90s and beyond. We talked about each song with Jim Baviglia. Today, I'm pleased to share another way of looking at this album through cover songs. We're launching a new show on the FM Podcast Network called Watching the Covers Flow, which is going to focus on covers of Dylan songs and sometimes cover songs sung by Bob Dylan. Ray Padgett is putting it together and hosting. You know Ray from his Flagging Down the Double E's newsletter and his great Pledging My Time book. You may not know that Ray wrote a book about cover songs called Cover Me, and he runs a website called CoverMeSongs.com. To introduce this new podcast, I'm sharing their premiere episode here. It's perfect since it focuses on the very topic we've been talking about. And most of Ray's first batch of shows will mirror our look at Dylan in the mid-80s. But after today, you're going to have to subscribe to his show separately. So please go and follow the show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. There are links in the show notes to make it easy for you to find. There will be extended and bonus episodes of Watching the Covers Flow. So if you haven't yet, please join FM Plus so you can hear everything. You'll be supporting Ray and all the podcasters on the network. And for just $5 a month, you get everything from all of our shows. But for now, let's take a very different look at Empire Burlesque. It's interesting, given the feel and reputation of that album, how different it sounds when you hear the cover versions that Ray has pulled together. We've put together playlists containing all the music in Watching the Covers Flow, and they'll be updated every time there's a new episode. You can find links to the playlists for Apple Music, Spotify, and Tidal in the show notes. Now, here's the first episode of Watching the Covers Flow with Ray Paget. Welcome to Watching the Covers Flow podcast about covers of and by Bob Dylan. I'm your host, Ray Padgett. I write the newsletter Flagging Down the Double E's, all about Dylan in concert, and wrote the book Pledging My Time, Conversations with Bob Dylan Band Members. I also run the cover songs site Cover Me, so this podcast unites my two passions, covers and Bob Dylan music, and every episode will be either covers of Bob Dylan songs or covers of other songs by Bob Dylan. Each episode will have a topic or theme and, of course, a whole lot of music, as well as some info from me about each song. We will also publish show playlists on most popular streaming services. So if you want to listen to the full songs, you can look in the show notes to find the playlists. This show is part of the FM Podcast Network. Some shows will be free, but FM Plus subscribers will get extended and bonus episodes. If you sign up, you get all the extras from every show on the network, which includes Pod Dylan, Dylan FM, The Dylan Taunts, and others. Sign up directly in Apple Podcasts or fmpods.com. Today, we're going to explore covers of every song from Dylan's 1985 album, Empire Burlesque. This is the one where he said he wanted to sound like Prince. It presents an interesting opportunity for cover artists in the sense that there are many great songs on this album, but the recording of those songs is, to put it mildly, divisive. This is the one with drum machines. This is the one with synthesizers. This is the one with chirpy backing vocals. Some of us love those things. Many others do not. Today, we'll be hearing versions of these same songs without all of those very 80s production touches. Let's go. first cover on our list is also the first track on Empire Burlesque. It's the song Tight Connection to My Heart. The cover I've got is by a group from Massachusetts called John Carroll and Love Returns. The fun fact I learned while looking up who John Carroll was is that he was a member of the Starland Vocal Band. And if you're saying who is the Starland Vocal Band, you certainly know one of their songs. They are the one-hit wonders behind the 70s 
novelty song, Afternoon Delight. You know, Sky Rockets in Flight, that one. But this cover comes from many, 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 many years later, only a few years ago, in fact. Um, it sort of starts slower, like a little piano jazz. But once it kicks in, it kind of gives a window into what Empire Burlesque might have sounded like without the very 80s production. So this is John Carroll and Love Returns doing Tight Connection of My Heart. Talk to me, go ahead and talk. Whatever you gotta say to me ain't gonna come as any shock. I must be guilty of something. Please whisper it into my ear. You know, Madam Butterfly lulled me to sleep in a town without pity where the water runs deep. She said, Go eat. There ain't nothing worth stealing in here Well, you're the one I've been searching for You're the one who holds the key I'm not sure if I'm too good for you, boy if You're too good for me, baby Has anybody seen my love? Has anybody seen my love? That was John Carroll and Love Returns. Next up is what might be Bob Dylan's favorite song on this album, at least judging by the fact that he has played it more than any other. That is Seeing the Real You at Last. Unfortunately, it might not be many other musicians' favorite song, at least judging by the fact that there are very few covers of it. I actually first explored this idea of a full album set of Empire Burlesque covers for my site, Cover Me, back in 2015 or something like that. And at the time, for this song, there wasn't a lot to choose from. I ended up using uh, a Dylan tribute band, which was fine, but not wildly great. However, three years after that project, Betty Levette, the great soul singer, came through and did by far the best, and indeed one of the only, covers of Seeing the Real You at Last. This one is off her Dylan covers album, Things Have Changed, which featured a couple classics, but really a lot of deep cuts and a lot of 80s cuts. Not just this, but Political World, What Was It You Wanted, Emotionally Yours, and some others. Great stall production, and of course, Betty Levette's vocals. So here is Betty Levette doing Seeing the Real You at Last. Didn't I risk my net for you? Didn't I take chances? Didn't I rise above it all? The most unfortunate circumstances Well, I had some rotten nights I didn't think they'd pass I'm just thankful and grateful To see the real you That was Betty Levette. Unfortunately, that covers album I mentioned has a bit of a bummer postscript, which is that she did an interview at the start of 2023 in which in which she expressed great frustration. I believe contempt was the word she used at Bob Dylan himself for the fact that he did not help her promote it or say anything nice about it, either publicly or privately. Uh, it's a shame that the experience of that album left such a bad taste in her mouth because it is a great record. Anyway, now we go from Levette to LaVare, two similarly named musicians that sound very different. This is Amy LaVare, a Memphis-based singer-songwriter who has a couple of terrific albums of her own music, but this cover comes off a 2007 album titled Anchors and Anvils. It's the track I'll Remember You. Earlier I mentioned Seeing the Real You at Last was Dylan's most played song off Empire Burlesque, and this is the other most played song, I'll Remember You. Between Seeing the Real You at Last to this one, he's played those two way, way, way more than any other songs off this album. It's one of those songs that I think even Empire Burlesque skeptics tend to get behind, and they certainly will with Amy LaVare's cover of it. I'll remember you When I've forgotten all the rest You to me
really paying close attention to Dylan's world in the mid-80s, the first version you would have heard of Clean Cut Kid was not, in fact, the one by Bob Dylan on Empire Burlesque. A year before that, the very first version of the song released came from Carla Olson and the Text Tones. Now, how did Carla Olson end up with this song before anyone else? She had been in the video. Dylan's video for Sweetheart Like You, and if you watch that video, she's the blonde woman playing guitar next to Dylan. So basically, returning the favor, he gave her this then unreleased song to record and release herself. And I'd say her version is honestly a little better than his, at least better than the one he put on Empire Burlesque. It's raw, rockin', and when you listen to it, listen to two things. There are two other notable people you'll pick out. The keyboard, which is extremely prominent here, that's Barry Goldberg. Barry played with Dylan himself uh, at Newport, 1965. Uh, Dylan goes electric, and he played with Bob a bunch of other times. I actually uh, interviewed him for my book about all of those times. Then the other person an instrument to listen for is the slide guitar. A little less prominent, but you can hear it. And that's Ry Cooter, another person in Dylan's orbit. So this is Carla Olson of the text tones doing what was actually the first ever version, even before Bob's, of Clean Gut Kid. The next song, Never Gonna Be the Same Again, is in the running with maybe one other track on Empire Burlesque as the least covered song on this entire album. The other one we will get to in a couple minutes, but for Never Gonna Be the Same Again, there are only a couple covers I could find. My favorite one comes from Ron Sexsmith. It wasn't released officially or anything like that. It's just a YouTube video, you know, live into the iPhone camera sort of thing. Um, but it's great. And Ron, if you follow him on Twitter, you're well aware he's a Dylan super fan. He's often posting photos of whatever Dylan album he is listening to at that moment. What I did not realize, though, is that Bob Dylan is also a Ron Sexsmith fan. He, in fact, played one of Ron's songs on the fifth episode of Theme Time Radio Hour. And he talked a little bit about Ron for that. So here's a short clip from that Theme Time Radio Hour episode. Next up, we have a song about raindrops in my coffee by Sexsmith and Care. The Sexsmith is Ron Sexsmith, great singer-songwriter from up in Canada. Wrote a beautiful song from a few years back called Secret Heart. On this record, he does a series of duets with Don Kerr, who's played drums and cello with his band for years. They're standing in the rain again with raindrops in their coffee. What's a boy to do to make the clouds disappear? Three, four. Raindrops in my coffee. What's a boy to do to make the clouds disappear? What's a boy to do to make it clear? Raindrops or tears rolling down my cheek. So there you have it, Ron Sexsmith getting the Bob Dylan seal of approval. The cover we're going to play today, though, is his version, uh, Ron's version of Never Going to Be the Same Again. I think just hearing this sort of intimate song performed in an intimate manner, as opposed to, like with many songs on the original Dylan album, bombastic and heavily produced and backing singers and all that, hearing it like this, you hear the song in a different way, quieter, solo, intimate. So here is Ron Sexsmith doing Never Gonna Be the Same Again. Three, four... Beside me, baby, you're a living dream. And 
And every time you get this close, it makes me want to scream. You touch me and you knew that I was one for you. And then I ain't never gonna be the same. Sorry if I hurt you, babe. Sorry if I did. I'm sorry if I touched the place where your secrets are hid. But you mean more than anything, and I could not pretend. I ain't never gonna be the same. About baby, every time I see you. Don't worry, baby, I don't mind leaving. But just like it to be my idea. Well, you taught me how to love you, babe. You taught me oh so well. And I can't go back to what was, babe. I can't unring the bell. But you took my reality and you cast it to the wind. I ain't never gonna be the same again. Anything, and I could not pretend I ain't never gonna be the same again. The next song is a cover of Trust Yourself by Carlene Carter, the daughter of June Carter Cash, stepdaughter of Johnny. This cover features something, or should I say someone, that none of the other covers I'm going to play features. Take a listen and see if you can figure out what or who it is. Could you hear it? That was, of course, Bob Dylan himself singing backing vocals on this cover. You know, I recently interviewed the engineer who recorded this cover, a guy named Joe Ramersa, and he talked about how it came to be that Dylan sang on it. The short version of the story is that Howie Epstein, the bassist for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, was the producer of this. And so Howie recruited Dylan. Um, Joe, the engineer, had a bunch of great stories. I'll run them in the newsletter soon of this and some other interactions with Bob. But one specific to those backing vocals that I found interesting is that Bob Dylan refused to sing them into a microphone on his own in the studio. He demanded that someone else, in this case it was Howie, sing into that same microphone with him at the same time, kind of just like Petty and Dylan did on their tours together. Joe's sort of theory behind why that was was that Bob Dylan didn't want an isolated Bob Dylan vocal track out there for anyone to do God knows what with. So the only track has both Bob Dylan and someone else, Howie Epstein, singing on it at the same time. That being said, you can certainly hear Bob Dylan plenty clearly in that cover. This next cover is probably going to be the best known to everyone listening to this. It is Emotionally Yours, as sung by the OJs. They, of course, did it at Bob Fest, the early 90s big Madison Square Garden celebration of the 30th anniversary of Dylan's career. I'm pretty sure I heard that version before I heard Bob Dylan's own version, and it is wonderful. 
I learned later they'd actually been singing it for a couple of years at that point. They released an album in 91 called Emotionally Yours that did pretty well on the charts, and this was one of the singles. Although personally, having heard both of them now, I still prefer that live version from Bob Fest. The album version, kind of like Dylan's original, is fairly heavily produced. It's got drum machines, it's got synths, you know, all that sort of stuff that dates it. And if you've got the OJ singing, really, what else do you need? Next up might be my favorite cover of this entire program. Not coincidentally, it's a cover of my favorite song off Empire Burlesque, When the Night Comes Falling from the Sky. I love the original, I love the bootleg series version, I love the live ones with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and I love this cover. It's by Lucius, the indie pop duo of singers Jess Wolf and Holly Lassig. They recorded this for a 2014 tribute album called Bob Dylan in the 80s, where a bunch of indie rock types covered his less often covered 80s tunes. So this is Lucius doing When the Night Comes Falling from the Sky. Remember a few minutes ago when I said that Never Gonna Be the Same Again was one of the two least covered songs off of Empire Burlesque? Well, now we reach the other, and it is Something's Burning, Baby. In fact, when I first attempted to do a similar thing for Cover Me, I thought this track would be the end of it, because I could not find a single cover of it. Not even a bad one, not even something on YouTube. Eventually, though, I stumbled upon a Discogs listing for an extremely obscure out-of-print album by a Canadian musician named Scott B. Sympathy. It supposedly featured a cover of this track, but it wasn't streaming, it wasn't on YouTube anywhere. I'm pretty sure I ended up emailing the guy, and he just sent it to me. Uh, And I'm glad he did, because it's a fun alt-rock, indie rock type version of a song that I don't think anyone claims is some classic Bob Dylan composition. But I was so glad that at least one person had covered it and did a heck of a job too. So here's Scott B. Sympathy with Something's Burning Baby.
Finally, we reach the one song that even the most diehard Empire Burlesque skeptic seems to like, and that is Dark Eyes, the closing track. The one song that dispenses with all that big 80s production and just gets back to basics. Bob Dylan and an acoustic guitar, the way the world first heard him. So it is perhaps not a huge surprise this song has been covered way more than some of the others. I mean, if something's Burning Baby is on one end, Dark Eyes is on the other. There's good versions by Warren Zevon, by Joan Osborne. Patti Smith does a good version, even before she actually sang it with Bob himself. Uh, Perhaps my favorite of the batch, though, is the one that was on the I'm Not There soundtrack by the singer Iron and Wine, otherwise known as Sam Beam, and the band Calexico. It's got a beautiful new melody, rhythm, kind of a Tex-Mex instrumentation, harmonies, a little wah-wah guitar in the background. Absolutely gorgeous and a perfect place for us to go out. So this is Iron and Wine and Calexico combining forces on Dark Eyes. That's it for this episode of Watching the Covers Flow. I'm Ray Padgett. If you want more from me, you can find my writing on Dylan Concerts at flaggingdown.com. And we'll be back soon with more Dylan Covers. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. This show is a part of the FM Podcast Network. Visit us at fmpods.com.